If you would indulge me for a moment, I want you to pretend it's the early 20th century. You are one of the many day trippers making your way from Great Yarmouth up the River Yare to Norwich, on board either the Waterfly or the aptly named Yarmouth Bell. It is late morning, around 11.30. As you approach Brampton's river bank, suddenly the peaceful sound of the passing water and the birds are interrupted by the ringing of a bell. Looking around for the source of the noise, you see him, now standing on top of the bank, described as thin and wiry but athletic, dressed rather peculiarly in a striped cricket cap, a singlet adorned with medals, long shorts and plimsolls. He strikes up a running pose, smiling from ear to ear, and sings out, that for full effect I will now attempt in probably a very bad Norfolk accent. My name is Billy Blue Light, my age is 45. I hope to reach the Cara Bridge before the boat arrive. My apologies for that, but thank you. With this, he sprints off at full speed towards Norwich. And this would be the rest of your journey, racing this strange fellow. Sometimes you will be neck and neck with each other. Other parts of the river, he will be much further ahead. Towards the end of your journey, you lose sight of him. Next time you see him, it's at Carrow Bridge, where he stands triumphantly near the Bloom Tower ruins, awaiting the applause and, of course, the money that was to be thrown to him by the astonished passengers. With according to some, him repeating his little rhyme again. You have just encountered Billy Blue Light, one of Norfolk's most famous eccentrics. It is believed that Billy was possibly born on the 10th of April, 1859, although there is some debate on this. His real name was William Cullum, and his rather carefree persona was in stark contrast to the hard life he had growing up. He was from one of the poorest parts of the city, they say, no more than a slum. He had no formal education, although did teach himself to read. Most of his life, he held a job as a street hawker, normally found outside the Coleman's factory when the workers were leaving, selling firewood, blackberries, matches, and even Leach's cough tablets. Although, for a short time, he worked at the Cayley's Chocolate Factory. I've already done a presentation on the history of Cayley's in Norwich. Please follow the link on screen if you are interested. It is unclear when Billy first started his famous racing, but by 1907, he was already famous for racing the pleasure boats, something he did to earn money, due to the lack of a welfare state at the time to support him and his mother, whom he lived with, in a number of houses across the city during their lives, from Colgate to Oak Street to St Mary's Plain. Where his chosen nickname came from is a bit of a mystery. Billy is clearly from the first name William, but Blue Light has several possible ideas. None, of course, can ever be proven, as is generally the case with most stories like this. Some say it was due to him running in all weathers and being described as having a blue nose in the winter. Although it is also claimed that he only ran in better weather, relying on other ways of making money in winter. Others have said it was due to his time as a street hawker, where he sold blue-tipped matches. The third most popular, and the one that has an additional connection to Billy, is that it comes from the Victorian use of blue light for a person who follows the temperance movement and is a teetotaler. This seems to fit William very well, as he was a known non-drinker and was known to speak out about the dangers of alcohol. His strange side job wasn't just something he undertook in his younger days either. His running lasted well into the 1930s. By this time, he was far beyond 45. Despite this, his age remained 45 in his little poem, probably due to how well it rhymed. He would also often catch the next boat back towards Yarmouth, happily talking to and telling stories to the passengers before getting off at Brampton to start his run again when the next boat came along. After his mother's death in 1930, he found it difficult to cope alone and moved into a workhouse, although others say it was into the West Norwich Hospital for a time before settling into a house in Palmer Road on the Mile Cross housing estate by 1939. As his age increased, he moved permanently into the West Norwich Hospital in his 80s, and here he would remain until being moved to the St James Hospital in Ship Meadow, Suffolk, where he passed away in 1949, aged 90. Both during and after his life for a time, Billy was a topic of conversation all over the city, and his legacy was summed up very nicely by the author R. L. Potter. The overworked term nature's gentleman was never better exemplified than this gentle, unpretentious character called Billy Blue Light. It may seem astonishing that a humble little man could imprint his personality on such a large city, but it was so. And this is why I believe he should be remembered. 
History is all too happy to keep the names of some of the worst killers and criminals imaginable in the public eye. Or those like Billy, a humble and inoffensive man who never hurt anyone. Rather eccentric to say the least, but harmless, have faded away. To say Billy Blue Light has been totally forgotten in Norfolk would be an exaggeration. There have been several tributes to him over the decades. In 1994, Woodfalls Brewery renamed the pub the Freemason's Arms on Hall Road in Norwich to the Billy Blue Light. An interesting tribute to a man who was a teetotaler, but a nice one nevertheless. But a change of owners in 2005 saw the pub return to the Freemason's Arms, and it remains so to this day. At the Woods End Inn on Wherryman Way in Brampton, a life-size statue of Billy is there in mid-run, unveiled on the 28th of May 2005. It is often dressed up accordingly to the time of year, as you can see in this picture. And I am told it is currently sporting a face mask, much like the rest of us. His life was also subject of a play by Crude Arcade Theatre Company, known as Nature's Gentleman, the story of Billy Blue Light. There is also a memorial bench along Riverside in Norwich that bears his name. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I'm sorry, it was a bit shorter than normal. There is not a huge amount of information out there on old Billy Blue Light, but his story is interesting nonetheless. All of the information and pictures used can be found in the description below. Feel free to subscribe and like if you wish. This was Billy Blue Light, the eccentric river runner, and this was a little bit of history.